In this lesson, we'll take a look at evaluating a definite integral using the method of u substitution. Here we're given the integral from zero to two of the square root of the quantity four x plus three dx. The first step is to recognize we need to perform u substitution to evaluate the integral where u is equal to the radicand of four x plus three. So if we have u equals the quantity four x plus three, then differential u or du is equal to the derivative of the quantity four x plus three times dx, which gives us four dx. We don't have four dx in the integral, and therefore we'll solve for dx by dividing both sides by four. Simplifying, we have one fourth du equals dx. And now we can substitute u for the quantity four x plus three and one fourth du for dx. We do need to remember though, the limits of integration from zero to two are x values, not u values. So when writing this in terms of u, we will leave the limits of integration off for now. Again, dx is equal to one fourth du. Let's factor out the one fourth, and then we have du. And the square root of the quantity four x plus three is now the square root of u, which can be written as u to the power of one half. And if we want to leave this in terms of u, we need to find the limits of integration for u. So notice when x is equal to zero, u is equal to four times zero plus three, the lower limit of integration for u is three. And when x is equal to two, u is equal to four times two plus three, which is 11, the upper limit of integration for u is 11. And now that we have these new limits of integration, we can evaluate like we normally do. Determining the antiderivative, we have one fourth times u to the power of one half plus one, which is three halves, divided by three halves. Dividing by three halves is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of two thirds, which gives us one fourth times two thirds times u to the power of three halves. Simplifying, there is one two and two and two twos and four. Notice here we have a product of one sixth. Let's go ahead and factor out the one sixth. And now we need to determine one sixth times difference of big F of 11 and big F of three. This gives us one sixth times the quantity 11 to the three halves minus three to the three halves. And this is the exact value of the original definite integral. But I also want to show how we can write this in medical form. A to the power of three halves is equal to a to the first times a to the power of one half, which is equal to a square root a. Which means we can also write the exact value as one sixth times the difference of 11 square root 11 and three square root three which is approximately 5.2145. Before we go, I do want to show a slightly different way we could have shown the work. If we go back up to where we had the integral in terms of u and leave the limits of integration off, we would have one fourth times the indefinite integral of u to the power of one half to u. And if we find the antiderivative, we know we'd have one fourth times u to the power of three halves divided by three halves plus c which would give us one fourth times two thirds times u to the power of three halves plus c, which you know from above is equal to one sixth times u to the power of three halves plus c. So now from here, if we wanted to, we could write the antiderivative in terms of x, leave off the plus c, and evaluate the original def integral using the original limits of integration from zero to two. And I just want to show that. We would have one sixth times the quantity four x plus three to the three halves. And again, because we have the antiderivative in terms of x, we use the limits of integration from zero to two, factoring out the one sixth. We would have one sixth times the difference of big F of two and big F of zero. Or notice big F of two is the quantity four times two plus three, which is 11, raised to the three halves power, and then minus big F of zero is the quantity four times zero plus three, giving us three to the three halves. And of course we get the same result. 
And I just wanted to show this because sometimes you will see work for a deaf integral written in this form. And finally, before we go, if we take a look at the graph of the integrand function over the closed interval from zero to two, notice how the area bounded by the function on the x-axis over this interval is above the x-axis, indicating the value that we found is equal to this shaded area. I hope you found this helpful.